my god. Oh my god. Hi, Lewis. What's up, guys? Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. I'm here at a really special garage with my buddy, Mike Muniz. Mike is also a Team Wildcar member. Actually, he was a Team Wildcar member way before I was a part of the Wildcards. He is known as the Corolla guy, according to Jay Leno, right? Yep. You build Corollas, you build amazing Corollas. You have three really beautiful Corollas here. We actually are gonna talk about your rally car today. I actually had a chance to kind of see you at a local meet and I'm like, hey, can I shoot some of your cars? I kind of wasn't ready for this kind of quality and this craziness. I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, I just walked in here and my jaw dropped. What is th this thing? Tell me about this. This is a 1973 Toyota TE27 Corolla. This has had several iterations. It's been a road car, a drag car, slalom car, circuit car, and a rally car. So in its current form, it's an FIA certified rally car. <sighs> okay, all right. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. So. FIA certified, so you actually can compete in rallies with this car. Correct. Everything in this car, seats, seat belts, um, cage, everything has been certified uh, to be able to compete in the world stage of rally. Oh my God. Okay, so what, what is this? Why does it say TRD factory here if you built it? Yeah, so this is 90% um, of the parts that are on this vehicle are TRD parts, uh, including this very rare TRD 152E race engine that is actually no longer made. Uh, it never came in any vehicle. It wasn't a production engine. It was built specifically by TRD to be competitive in racing events. It's a dry sump engine. It was a flat, flat slide injected system before, and now I'm running uh, twin 48 side draft DCOE Webers. It's just better for rallying. Uh, it doesn't have to be full all out all the time. It has to have mid range and low end. It has a five speed W58 close ratio transmission in it, a 411 TRD rear end posse traction, long throw extended uh, front adjustable struts, uh, one piece fiberglass, rear leaf springs, uh, you name it, everything that you can put in a car to be competitive is in here. 7311. So this is not actually built to be a show car. This is actually something that you're going to race. Yeah, just like a lot of my uh, wild card buddies, uh, we build cars to be driven, driven hard, as a matter of fact. The side effect is just, it looks like a show car. It really was not built to be a show car. Uh, it's built so that it's quality, and that's why it looks like a show car. It's built uh, for quality so that it would last long and it would be competitive. Okay, so the crazy thing to me is that you build these cars in this garage, in basically in this two-car garage, but of course it's a three Corolla garage because Corollas <laughs> are so small. Correct. But you just build it in your home on your spare time because you you have your day job yes and then when you come home you just tinker on your cars yeah so uh i'm one of the ones that are lucky i only need four hours of sleep <laughs> so when i get home i come straight to my garage i uh, sometimes eat my dinner here in the garage fortunate enough my wife uh, is really cool about this and she knows that this is how i unwind and i kind of like uh, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. So this is kind of like all of that. Uh, it's a lot healthier, I think. I think I, uh, <laughs> that's, it's funny. I, I, a lot of people that I interview actually say those exact words. Uh -huh. You know, they don't do any bad things. I mean, I guess potentially, technically, this is a bad thing. But yeah, you don't do the normal vices, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah. This is your thing. Cars are your thing. Cars are all of our things. That's why you guys are watching this channel too. Let's just take a walk around this. There's just so many little things, so many details on this that absolutely blow my mind. So tell me about the livery on this. Okay, so this livery is actually the livery for the 1973 to 1975 Toyota Celica rally car. I was gonna go with the Corolla style, but it was too plain for me. I, I just like this livery, but I reversed it. Um, the Celica was a white with red, and mine's red with white. So it's pretty much my own livery. 
uh, just taking some cues from the original Toyota Celica rally car. But when I look at it now, I could imagine that this was like a time capsule, like this was an actual rally car that competed in 1973. Like it just looks, it's so finished. Uh, how long did it take for you to get it to this point? So I've had this car since 1988. And um, like everybody that fixes their cars up, they say it's never done. Yes. I'm pretty close to being done. I, I'm probably 10% from actually being complete. Uh, so it's taken that long to finish it. I'm pretty happy with how everything's turned out. Just need to do a little bit more tuning uh, with the carburetor. Other than that, it's, it's pretty much there. Ugh, every little thing. I mean, like, like the tires, are those paired correct also? Yeah, so those are uh, gravel uh, tires for rally. And the extra ribbing on the side is actually to prevent it from getting punctures while you're sliding on gravel roads. Um, it can also be used on um, grass. Uh, it's not really optimal for tarmac. I have tarmac uh, wheels for this one, which is like sitting over there uh, with the TRD uh, wheels on them. Um, so, but these are very hard to find TRD rally wheels. These are actual rally wheels from Toyota Racing Development. And this was available in their catalog from 1971 to 1986. So uh, nowadays you, you really can't find them. Of course, I had it powder coated white because that's just how it is in rally. You like, you want to see your wheels white so you can see any of the cracks or flaws. Um, so that's why it's white. Uh, they look brand new. They look like new old sock. So, and all of this, this is all TRD, huh? Yes. All of these things. Yes, these are, these are uh, actually, these are um, original for the Toyota SR5 1974 US model, but it came in all uh, TE27s from 1971 to 1974 in Japan. The Levin, the Trueno, like these right here, and like the one over there. Those are a standard issue. Uh, they do have them wider, um, but this is exactly how they had it when they were building the rally cars back in the day. This is why they call you the Corolla guy. <laughs> you, yeah. you know everything about these cars. And like even these mud flaps, these are actual TR, or are yes. these, these are actual TRD Those ones. are new old stock uh, TRD mud flaps. Uh, they're aluminum plus rubber. Um, yeah, those were really tough to locate. I knew somebody that had one. It was installed in his car and I kept on telling him, hey, can I buy it? I just really need it for my vehicle. It needs to be period correct. He had a, uh, a newer version car. So he finally decided, hey, maybe it's time to let go of it. And now I have it. <laughs> so, but that, that's kind of the theme around the car, right? Even like, this is kind of like a mud flap too, right? I think you were explaining that this is for uh, when you're actually going through water. Yes, yeah, so they call this the front mustache uh, mud flap. And typically when you are doing like a rally, uh, like they had a wet safari rally one year, and each time you go through a stream or through a, a puddle, the water and mud will splash over the bumper onto the windshield, so it's kind of hard to see. This one, it actually directs the mud and the water underneath it, so it exits to the side of the vehicle and it prevents it from getting on top. Some mud, some water still gets on top, but uh, the majority of it is actually pushed away by this uh, mustache mud flap. You're blowing me away. Like this is so clean and it's so brand new. I can't believe you're actually gonna race this thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to drive your cars. Uh, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time that that build their cars and they just sit inside their house. It's like, you know, eventually you are gonna die. You're not gonna be around anymore. Somebody else will get your car and then they're gonna have fun in your car. Why not have fun in your build? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good way to put it. All right, so let's go back to the motor. I kind of skipped over this thing. So have you dynoed this? How much power does this make? I haven't dynoed this, but I actually have the spec sheet for this motor, which is kind of weird because for a very rare motor, I have 10 of these. I have 10 of these engines, uh, the 152E. Two are running. One is a very rare uh, twin turbo model that was for DOME uh, Toyota Racing uh, team. But the spec on this one is a 2.3 liter. This, is, this was an IMSA motor, a spare IMSA motor. It had the flat slide injections, like the one that's over there. Um, but I converted to carburetor. And when it had the flat slide, it was around 320 horsepower, according to the spec at the flywheel. So I think right now it's probably at around 300. So it's a little lower. It doesn't have that big of uh, throttle body or, or uh, 
flat slide as, uh, as it had when they had that spec. So this actually never came in a Corolla race car then? No, so the Corolla race car back in the day had the smaller version of this, which is the 151E, this 152E. The 151E was a two liter, this is a 2.3 liter. Um, this is the bigger brother. Um, eventually this design, this head was so revolutionary that it transferred over to the 503 that was used in Pike's Peak by Rob Millen. the 900 horsepower uh, monster. And then eventually that design uh, became the 3S GTE. You're learning me something. See, I, I consider myself a Toyota guy until I met Mike. Now I know I'm just a guy. <laughs> this is just so crazy. Okay, let's look at, let's check, check out the rear. Can we check out the rear here? Oh, Levin Rally, amazing. I mean, just the fact that you're getting all of these badges and all of this stuff is all of this new old stock or did you restore all no of these are restored um these are restored i didn't want to waste a new old stock on a car that's going to be pretty much trashed around so this has been restored i cleaned it up uh, a friend of mine pj actually painted it and uh yeah got the cb antenna here um mandatory for any old school rally car i have a working cb in the vehicle you you were talking about the leaf springs too earlier yeah can you tell me more about these yeah so they are fiberglass leaf springs and you ask hey isn't that dangerous having a fiberglass leaf spring uh, actually no so this one's tensile strength is the same as a i would say carbon fiber uh suspension component it's pretty strong so this one can actually handle a lot of the pounding and it's weird it's almost like progressive uh on the road it feels comfortable and then when i hit a bump it just really stops so it's really good but so is this a actual what they used back then for the rally cars no so back then they used actual metal leaves um this one saves weight this one's only five pounds each the typical leaf spring i think is 25 pounds each so i'm trying i'm trying to save some weight where i can save some weight even though the car uh when we had it weighed at the scales it was 1525 pounds <laughs> that's very light that's car. very very light especially yeah. So potentially with 300 horsepower. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's gonna that's gonna move out so good. Yeah. I've got the uh, pan hard bar. Yeah. So it has everything that you would need to be competitive. So this is actual TRD racing too. No, that was that wasn't. I, actually, when I got this leaves, it had TRD on it, and I was mm. misled to think it was made by TRD. Uh, but I found out later on that it wasn't actually TRD. It's a uh, it's an aftermarket company. Mm. And is this exhaust custom? Yes, I'm custom made exhaust. This is actually used by a lot of drag racers in the domestic American vehicles. These are Spintex. Um, they're quiet and they flow well. I originally had this and the two other mufflers that are in here. So there's three mufflers. When I was running my rotary, since my rotary was so loud. Which one is this that? This one right here. Yeah, so this was a, yeah, my, my 12A uh, full bridge port. They call it monster port. It's built by Pack Performance in Australia. When I took that out, I had the system already in. So eventually I'm going to have to customize a new exhaust system for it because in rallying, they really only require you to have one muffler. So it'll free up more horsepower. So you've actually been rallying for a while. So there's like some old pictures of here actually driving the, yeah. at the rim of the world here back in 1995. Yeah, rallying, rallying is really fun. Um, the, the whole history of why I got into rally was when I was growing up in the Philippines, there's actually a circuit in the Philippines back in the day called Green Hill Circuit. And then when houses started getting built, everybody got pushed out and there was no more place to race. People started racing in the mountains, discovered rally. So that's how I got into rallying. It's just, we kind of got pushed out from the, uh, the racetrack and then we got into the, uh, the mountains. Unbelievable. Okay, all right. So. I know there's a lot to talk about on the inside, so I'm just gonna go to the driver's side and you you open that side and we'll just, <laughs> this, is, this is where there's just so many interesting things. Okay, where do we start? All right, so uh, just like any rally car, if all your electronics fails, you have a backup stopwatch timer. So that's a original old school Seiko stopwatch that was actually used in rallying then you have your cb radio that 
if you ever need help and you have no phone signal, that's how you're gonna get some help. Um, and then these are rally computers. If you guys are not familiar, they're pretty much like odometers. So you're able to set each stage so that you can compare it to your pace notes to see where you're at. So the navigator does all this stuff. All I do is rally, uh, actually uh, drive and I listen to them through here. So this is the intercom system. Uh, these are connected to our helmets in the back. So that's how we communicate because it is so loud in here. You cannot, ye even if you yell at the top of your lungs, you would not be able to hear each other. Right. So you have to communicate through intercom system. First aid. Yeah. So this is kind of the misconception with rally. Um, actually, a lot of my friends who shoot a lot of stage rally, actually follow a lot of stage rally, will absolutely hate me because pretty much for this whole video, I've been calling it racing. <laughs> it's not actually racing, it's rallying. Yeah. So, um, what people don't realize is it's a street legal car. Yes. And when you're tra transiting from stage to stage, you have to follow the rules of the road. You have to change your own brake pads. You have to change your own tires. You have to basically do whatever you can just in between stages, potentially yourself. Yes. Right. Um, that That's what a lot of people don't realize. And that's the crazy thing is when you're following stage rally, especially when you're following WRC, you could see Sebastian Loeb just driving his car, just whatever. He's just driving it on the street, yep. sitting in traffic like a normal person, you know, because it's actual a straight legal car. Um, so this is, uh, I love that there's an old school calculator here too. Yes. <laughs> so that's also uh, the navigator's um, job. So they can, they can calculate how long we have between stages. Uh, and calculate how much speed I can go between stages and not break the law in between stages when using uh, public highways. Um, also, the fuse box has been re relocated here. So any pop fuses, you're able to see it with the map light. Um, so you have this map light also for the navigator. Um, so wait, your wife is your navigator? Yeah, so she's been trained uh, to navigate. So uh, both of us um, enjoy the sport together. And that is why it's perfect because we were, she's able to support me and she's part of my sport. Wow. Okay, so how old are these computers? So this one right here is circa around 1971. Um, this one's even older. This is Tosco. So this is 1969, 1970. Um, all these work. Let me turn them on for you so you can see. No way. I can't believe. It actually looks pretty modern. Oh my. So you can see these are all connected via cable to the transmission. So um, like a speedometer and you can uh, change the brightness if you want it brighter. So if it's at nighttime, you want it brighter, you can see the difference. And then you can reset it here. Same thing here, you have your different times. So th all this is done by the navigator. So they look at the pace notes and they look at from this section to this section, we have to be at this speed and then they reset it so that they won't get lost as they're giving me uh, directions on how fast to go and where the turn's going to be. I, you also have old pace notes there. Yeah, huh? so this is from the Rim of the World Rally pace notes. If you guys have not seen what a pace note looks like. <sighs> what year is this? So these are, let's see, uh, 98. 1998. Yeah. When was the last time you did a stage rally? So this, the last time I did a actual FIA rally was uh, 1998. And then all the other ones are rally crosses. Incredible. I absolutely love it so much. There's so many little things like, look at the switch panel. Yep. So this is EGT, the exhaust temperature. Um, this switch right here, um, before you start off, start this engine, it's a, um, a dry sump. You have to prime the oil, um, very important or else you're you know, starve the engine. Uh, these are old school TRD um, sunshades that were so hard to find. <laughs> but it's crazy because between this and just the normal, if you made it yourself, yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to tell. But, but you know. But you would know because of this, uh, this piece, aluminum piece that's riveted onto this uh, plastic. Yeah. And even this, this is a uh, uh, TRD cage yes. too. A real TRD cage. Yeah. Wow. So did I just? I don't even. There's just so much to talk about. I mean, like. So we had a chance to go to 
STI in Japan, and we had a chance to check out um, like the GC8, Colin McRae, his actual rally car. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many things with rally cars that you could see it's similar. You know, everyone has to just have these certain things. And it's so cool to see a period correct in, in this era, just the, the way that you put it all together. It's yeah. really, really awesome. I mean, it, it, but like these seats are brand new though. Yeah, right? these are brand new. Uh, that's because of the FIA certification. You have to, there's expiration dates on seats and seat belts. So these are brand new uh, seats and seat belts. Uh, thank you to OMP. They hooked me up with this. Also the steering wheel was by, uh, is hooked up by OMP. Yeah. But it, it still has that old school look though. Like yeah, so this. these are WRC rally seats. So they're actually rally, rally car seats. Um, and I was not sure if it was gonna fit, uh, but it, it fits just right. Um, There's just a lot of like odd stuff. Like um, I know that nowadays rally cars have very long shift, shift uh, sticks and, mm -hmm. and uh, e-brake. This one's still the old school cable uh, handbrake system and it has the very short throw TRD uh, shifter that's second, third, fourth. Wow. Yeah, so everything is like a short throw. So is this like a thing where you could lock it? You don't have to push this? No, so this is still the old school. You still have oh, to push the button. Oh, okay. Yes. To slide around a corner, you yeah. have to clutch in and yeah. pull that. Oh. Okay. I mean, just every little thing, like, I just love all of the, I love the that Technocraft jacket yeah, so, too yeah the, so the that's shirt. my that's my race suit it's oh a, really yeah so that's actually a one-piece race suit um uh, technocraft is a predecessor of tosco uh so before way before trd so uh yeah that's an actual uh race suit from uh technocraft um you've got all these little things on here you have this thing that yeah that's what you use to in case you yeah you break the glass and then you can also cut your seatbelt uh if it's jammed up um, you have the first aid kit there. You have uh, more paste notes on that door. So everything is, everything's here. Oh, amazing. Just incredible. I absolutely love this build so much. Oh, this is really cool. Tell me about the light pod system here. Yeah, so the IOD um, CB lights are um, kind of hard to find now. These are, these are new old stock. Um, a lot of the off-road lights now are LED. These are still, um, they call it IODs, where it's H4, H7s. Same thing with, with these lights. Yeah, I know everybody, SCV, yeah, right? everybody loves those lights. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. They look so good. Um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, so the lights are pretty standard for an, a 70s and 80s rally car. And then they have a bash plate underneath. Uh, of course, any, anytime you have your rally, you have to have a bash plate. The suspension, all of it, brakes, everything just looks brand new. Yeah, it's a long, very long travel um, front suspension uh, so that when you do jumps, it lands smooth and it doesn't jar anything. Um, the other thing is it's a solid mount motor uh, engine, so it's kind of rough in there. It really is race car <laughs> feel. You, you hear all the gears, you smell all the smells, um, which is fine. Uh, that's just how it is. You, you know, it's not like you're going to listen to music yeah. <laughs> when you're uh, driving one of these. So can, can you start it? Yeah. First of all, I want to hear the horns because these horns will look crazy. It's old school Bosch horns. <laughs> <laughs> that's really like get out of the way, <laughs> you know, those when you're on the stage. Those are uh, 1970s Mercedes Benz horns. Oh, wow. All right, you got to start it. All right, I want to so hear for this. startup, there's a procedure because it's uh, it is a dry sump, so you're gonna hear me crank it for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna cut the ignition, and it's gonna build up oil pressure. And once I have uh, oil pressure, then I turn back ignition, and then it will start up. Okay. So these are the things I love so much about these cars. Oh, Mr. Corolla, getting in. Here we go. There's no grace wheel way to do that oh well, never never no way so this one has to be on and neutral and then we'll build up oil pressure okay now turn 
this off, give it a little gas. I don't even I don't even know what to say I just I'm kind of speechless this is so cool I actually can't wait to shoot this in the dirt yes me me too <laughs> yeah I would love to see yeah. this in the dirt when do you think you'll start competing with this um, so I'm trying to get some um, paperwork done with another organization um, so that I can at actually get this back on the street and then once that's going, I'm going to look for uh, some local autocross uh, or rallycross, actually, and uh, compete in those first, get, get it tuned, get the suspension tuned, get the carburetor tuned. And then um, we really, my wife and I really want to take this to Monte Carlo because we, we, were already, uh, we were already invited two years ago, but I wasn't able to get the car done by then. So it's going to compete in the uh, Monte Carlo de Classique. It's uh, the classic rally uh, for Monte Carlo. Yes, I would love to see that. Uh, I can only imagine. I mean, okay, so I've had a chance to shoot WRC a couple times now, and the classic cars, those are, while they're maybe 10 times slower than the new cars, yeah. I don't care because they're just so dramatic when they come in. Yeah. You know, when they come to the corner, you're like, oh, like it's like slow, but they're still pegged. Yep. And they're going as fast as they can go. But it's just so cool to see these classic cars like Lancia's and um, Audi Quattro's yep. and just all of the older cars. People, Seeing this yeah. along with them. Yeah, what people amazing. don't understand is that so the, the older rally cars don't have any driver assistance. Everything is driver skill. You, have, you do not have ABS, no traction control. Uh, you don't have a long hydraulic handbrake um, so everything is actually with the driver uh, he has to be able to manipulate the weight of the vehicle to make it turn and to make it uh, last and actually not crash does this actually have a rev limiter yes it has a rev limiter i'm running um if you look over here this is another thing that was really hard to get this is a tosco 
ignition module. This is pre-TRD. This is 1970. And it had a built-in rev limiter in it. Uh, so I'm using that. And it failed on, it, on me once already. So I'm actually using a piggyback uh, MSD rev limiter that's inside the vehicle that I can change the uh, rev limit uh, when I want to. Oh, so you're using that along with the uh, yeah, so MSD? Yeah, this is my ignition system. Okay. And also it was a rev limiter. Oh. Uh, I over rev and that's why I broke one of my uh, valve springs that's hanging on the wall. Um, so I ended up using a piggyback from MSD. Oh, that's a good idea. Just just the little amount of revving that you just did right now, I can't believe how much heat it produces. But yeah. uh, it's incredible. I mean, so did you, did you make those headers? No, so these headers are actually from, um, I'm, I'm not sure if it was actually from TRD, but this came from Toy Sport. Yeah, okay. and... Um, yeah, they're like a Southern California Toyota experts, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then the bottom half uh, I made myself uh, that blanket was actually sponsored by um, a company that makes uh, blankets for Subarus. I love it. And I the reason why this heat shielding. And the reason why it sounds like there's exhaust leak, and it, it does. Um, the exhaust is in four pieces, and they're all um, secured by springs. Um, and the reason they do that is um, this engine does have a lot of expansion, and if you had one solid. Um, um, what do you call it, uh, flange or manifold, uh, it will crack the head. So it has to be separate and also um, it has to be able to be serviceable so you can undo the springs, take the headers off, take the motor out. Got it. So many things about this thing is just yeah, so Yeah, this is the cool. dry, dry sump system. This is where all the oil goes. Um, it's not running synthetic oil. Uh, I was told not to by uh, my friends at TRD. Uh, they said run regular oil in it, it's 240. Uh, 2050, I'm sorry, 2050. Well, I don't know how much more detail we can get into this thing. I really do appreciate you letting us come to your garage and shoot your beautiful cars. Uh, this is so cool. I think that's a wrap.